What's going on, everybody? This is Jeff with Living in Arizona, and today we're going to talk about is Arizona a racist state? So, you know, with this recent uh, situation that's been occurring out in Minneapolis, St. Paul right now, I mean, last night I was uh, watching live videos where uh, the whole city was basically, it appeared to be burning down. I mean, were, it's not funny, but I'm saying like I was shocked. I was like, they're going to burn down a whole city. And, you know, the argument about that is that, well, peaceful protests weren't working. These, these same people uh, that are racist still exist and nothing's really being done. So peaceful protests weren't getting through to these hardliner racist people. Thanks to everyone who crushed up the likes already. Five people already crushed up the likes. So um, I'm going to share some conversations that I've had with friends of mine who are black, who've been to Arizona and also been uh, to the South or around the country and, you know, sharing their, their, their experience. Because, uh, for example, I spoke to my friend. She said that uh, in Mississippi, for example, she can't really drive because she's black. She can't her and her family can't really drive across Mississippi um, because there's some areas where that are completely no go zones. And I said, I said, wow, that's crazy. I said, you know, is, is, have you ever experienced that here in Arizona? And she said, honestly, not really. Uh, she, I want to say she said no. And I said, well, obviously, you know, we all know that there's ignorance and there's uh, stupid people that exist that would have this extremely bigoted view uh, because no place is completely free of that. I mean, every race has some elements of supremacy in, inside their population demographics. I mean, we, we, we know that no race is completely cleansed of uh, racist, right? So no state or nation is going to be, or no city. So, I mean, it does exist, but when she was telling me how dangerous it is to go across Mississippi, Alabama, where it's like, literally, there's <laughs> danger zones. Um, Arizona, she said she hasn't really, and she's, you know, she's gone south, she's gone north, um, you know, like out in the rural areas, like, you know, deep. Um, there are some areas you may want to avoid, but, um, you know, for the most part, Arizona doesn't really have that kind of southern vibe that you get in a place like Mississippi. In fact, if I look, when I looked, I did a little bit of research here to see what the publications were saying about the most racist, racist states. Uh, the top 10. Oh, let me see. Something's. Oh, so the top 10. Uh, it says Delaware is the most, uh, based on racial slurs by tweet, Delaware is the most racist, South Dakota, Maine, Mississippi. Hawaii, Kansas, Wisconsin, Arkansas, West Virginia, and Maryland. The least racist state is supposedly uh, Vermont, New Hampshire, Alaska, and Texas. Texas is not considered a racist state, supposedly. But um, the, the element of racism that really exists pretty big in Arizona. By the way, if you guys think I'm wrong at any point, please comment and let me know, you know what your experience has been with racism in Arizona. You know. Um, but the, this idea that, uh, you know, Georgia is number 10, kind of surprising me. Let me see what these comments say. Um, people voice it out though. Yeah. So like one of the areas of racism that I would say you kind of get a sense of is towards like Hispanics from Mexico. Like you'll hear, um, but even though it's it's targeted towards Hispanics crossing the border, it's not typically about their race. It's about their nationality. So it's not like a racism. It's like a nationism, right? And what I mean by that is they're like there's they they say don't don't you know let the Mexicans come across the border illegally because they're taking jobs, they're not paying taxes, blah blah blah, whatever. So, but they're not coming over legally, you know. So it's kind of like it's not necessarily like towards a race but it's towards like a nation, people south of the border. So you do hear a little bit of that uh, in some fringe communities out here, but um, we hardly have any Asian people here. So um, I don't know what the experience for Asians is in Arizona, but um, I, do, I do think that one thing that I think happened across America during coronavirus that kind of stood out was a xenophobia towards Chinese people because they were concerned that for, you know, whatever you want to call it, however you want to look at it, they were thinking that every Chinese person had coronavirus. And then they were thinking, people were uh, assuming that if someone was of Asian descent, they were probably Chinese. They could be from Thailand, but people were just all of a sudden like Korean. They, if someone from Korea could be perceived to be uh, Chinese, even if they, you know, 
were Korean or Thai. And so it was kind of, it kind of got to that point. And then, so here in my own area, I'm looking at like, I like Chinese food. So, okay, I'll go eat Panda Express, but then I don't want just Panda, Panda Express. I want like Jade Garden or some like real, like, you know, Mandarin chicken or sesame chicken or Mongolian beef, whatever I like, you know, chicken noodle soup who know, or chicken um, egg drop soup. And I've noticed that the Chinese restaurants haven't come back on um, into business. And I was kind of concerned if there was an element of xenophobia that was affecting that. So, uh, <laughs> you know, and I think that the number one thing that really kind of makes it challenging for um, Arizona or the country is some people just think it's fine to just uh, say whatever they want, you know, without, you know, and, and, and unfortunately, because these people have so much confidence that they can say whatever they want, even if it's, even if it's like racist, blatantly racist or, you know, offensive, they go out and say all these things. And then they, they basically go on and, you know, they, they get this, what people call, you know, white privilege. I don't, I haven't really, if white privilege exists, I mean, it hasn't really come to me. I mean, I've heard a lot of people say that, um, that they haven't really experienced it. Like, I mean, when I got out of the military, I couldn't find work anywhere. And I was, I, I was told that when I went into the military that, uh, you, when you get out of the military, everyone's going to be wanting to hire you. I had a bachelor's degree. I was a military guy and I thought I was going to have all these like, you know, job offers, but it turns out Delta wasn't loading bomb loaders to put bombs on their, on the um, bottom of the aircraft. <laughs> so I was just, I'm just saying like this idea of privilege. So what I ended up having to do was become self-employed. So, I mean, I, I, I gave up on the job market and I ended up having to take the, for lack of a better term, you know, take life by the horns and corral it and grab the bull by the horns and do what I had to do to survive. Right. So I think that then, you know, working on the internet, I don't think people are going to know. They don't know when they're buying something from you. They don't know unless you're making a YouTube video, they don't know what you look like. Like when you buy this, I don't know. You don't know who made this smartphone. You don't know what the guy looked like who put that together. Right. So that's what I'm trying to say is, the, the white privilege thing is kind of crazy, but I can see why they say it exists. Um, people who are not white, they think, hey, being a white guy is pretty easy in America, isn't it? I'm like, I don't know. Like bill collectors are still knocking on my door and they want they want to put me in collections or debt and this and that. And I'm like, I don't really see the privilege. I mean, I got to I got to earn an honest day's wage anyway. So but I will say that when it comes to the big problem here that I think we need to really, as a society, nip in the bud is this uh, idea that it's okay to just hate someone based on how they look or be unfair to someone just based on how God put them into this world. You know, the way that they were born in this world, whether it be white, brown, black, uh, red, whatever it is, to just dislike them because of how they look, I think is, is, is truly, by definition, ignorance. And there's a lot of ignorant people out there that still exist. And this is what's brought about this, uh, this violence and this, these problems that come about. And then you have these people who are ignorant and they end up in positions of power and then they bring their ignorant views into their positions of power. And then they think they have immunity. And then they do things that essentially burn down Minneapolis. <laughs> you know, Minneapolis is getting burned down. I, I, I got to thinking, I was like, that would really suck if that happened here in Phoenix. You know, if these riots were to happen and it would really suck if you were in the area where it was occurring, you know, so um, it's crazy. It's crazy, man. <laughs> uh, so thanks to the 30 people who crushed up the likes. Go ahead. Share your experiences in the comments about what your experience with racism has been. Ben, um, you know, here's one new life. Arizona white privilege is BS. I don't see a Miss white American pageant. OK. Um. C. Marie Ramos, when it's an entire city, town, it's sad. I'd really like to retire in Prescott. CM says Black Panthers are not a racist group. Um, yeah, I mean, we don't, I don't know. I mean, any sort of supremacy group where they're preaching uh, supremacy based on the color of their skin, uh, you know, has to be looked at kind of as a, a fringe group, um, you know. Anytime you, I mean, what, what you get, you can't, you can't call balls and strikes one way over here and not the other way. So like, 
I mean, it's you got to call it straight down. You got to call it the same left and right. And I don't think that I don't think it's very good that you destroy your own city or get a loot. What you know, there's because something bad happens. I don't think that gives you the justification to just all of a sudden go rob somebody. I mean, I guess if you're saying an eye eye for an eye, but as far as I know, Target didn't do the crime, or did they? I mean, does the cop work for Target? He works for the city. I mean, <laughs> I, I, I don't know where this whole idea that it's okay to loot. And by the way, black people aren't the only ones out there looting. There's plenty of white dudes out there, white women and men and other races out there, you know, throwing throwing rocks through windows. So it's not just black people out there looting the city and burning it down. There's tons of white kids out there. You know, I saw a video of these, a whole group of them just throwing rocks through windows and they're taking, they're, they think it's open season to rob you know, and I'm sitting there thinking, I'm like, if that was my cigar shop or that was my music shop that was getting uh, robbed like that, and I didn't do anything but just, you know, have a business right there in front of these kids who think it's okay to just steal everything in the window, that's not right. And people giving that a free pass, that's <laughs> to me, that's a dangerous precedence to set, is to, to say that it's okay to go down and rob the local businesses and go rob these local establishments and go rob Target and do whatever you want because you're pissed off that there was an injustice that happened because some crazy cop did a bad, bad thing, a real bad thing, by the way. I mean, there's no doubt about it. That cop, what you, the first time you're watching that, you almost have to watch it two or three times to say, did, is he like, does he know what he's doing and how come he's not stopping? Right? Like, why is this guy, why is this guy literally like applying so much pressure and not stopping. And I think that's what everyone saw. And they're like, they're like, where did this cop get off thinking that that was okay or acceptable? And how did he think that he was protected enough to do something like that? And so, you know, that, that definitely pisses some people off and you could see why. Um, Robert Vogel, no, it's not right to steal from hardworking store owner. Yeah. I mean, what did the store owner do? That's like saying that if some injustice happens that someone can just come over to your house and just start throwing rocks through your window just because they pissed, they're pissed off that something happened on the, over there at their job. No, they don't get to do that. And so, you know, you, I think that it's crazy because I see people out there saying that, Oh, it's an eye for an eye, you know, let's show them, let's hit them in the, let's hit them where it hurts. And I'm like, so, okay, so you're going to go rob the local businesses because that's, that's because you're pissed off at some cops. No, I, I don't understand that logic. And I'm surprised that people are actually accepting that as acceptable behavior. And I'm not really seeing too much leadership in America saying that's it's inappropriate because it is inappropriate. I mean, imagine if you were the store owner who was getting looted and you didn't do anything but just have a business there that you were paying rent on and, you know, buying pur purchasing product from any distributor distribu distribution uh, places. <laughs> I mean, seriously, how could anyone think that's right? It's not right. It's not right. Um, anyways, guys, I just wanted to say, uh, that no, I don't think Arizona is a racist state. I mean, it's, it, there's, there's bad people here that exist, you know, there's, they're everywhere, but for the most part, Arizona is a, a real easygoing state. I mean, there are people who say crazy things, but it's not like one of those places like Mississippi where you can't go into the certain areas, at least from my experience. I mean, and, and if it does exist, as a community, as a state, we need to say that's not right. And it starts with us. It starts with the people. It says, hey, like you see someone doing something where they literally just hate someone just because of the way they look. You need to say like that's that's no reason to dislike somebody. And it's not acceptable. And it's it's no way to it's no way to be. Now, if they, you know, do something like, I don't know, I steal five thousand dollars from your bank account. That's a reason not to like someone. OK, <laughs> anyways. I just wanted to put that out there and share my thoughts on it. Thanks to the 40 people who crushed up the likes and I'll see you guys on the next one. If you haven't already subscribed to my other channel, Urban J, there is a link in the description. I just did a men's bathroom essentials video. If you guys want to watch it, you can go over there and check it out on Urban J Reviews. Link in the description to my channel. So we'll see you guys later.